So welcome to my kitchen, everybody. It's Friday night, and we're going to get started on our waffle sponge the night before. So tomorrow morning on Saturday, we'll be ready to make waffles. So we're going to start out with one cup of our starter that uh, we fed earlier. So if you want your starter to be uh, really active, feed it either the night before or the morning of, and uh, it'll be ready to go. Now mine's a little bit darker than, than some starters because I've been feeding it with uh, rye flour. So we need one cup. Some people's starter is a little bit uh, wetter than mine. Mine seems to be a little bit thick right now. We need one cup of just all-purpose flour. And we're going to put a tablespoon of brown sugar. Now you can put a tablespoon of honey. We're going to put a fourth a cup of milk. And then I'm going to use about a half a cup of Greek, just plain yogurt. Plain Greek yogurt. You can use a different sweetener. You can use honey. You can use a sugar substitute. If you like your waffle batter a little bit sweeter, maybe for the kids or something, you can add a little more to it. But uh, I try to keep it just as simple as I can, just a little bit of brown sugar. I'm actually out of honey right now, and I have got to find me some local honey this weekend. And this is going to be our sponge. So we're just going to stir this up good, and it's going to be a thick sponge. And like I said, mine's going to be a little bit darker just because of the rye flour. But you use whatever starter that you've got ready. And you just stir it up really good. And then we'll cover it up. And I'm just going to let it sit here all night. Anywhere from 8 to 12 hours. And just let it uh, do its thing. And then in the morning, you're just going to add a few more ingredients to it. And you're going to make your waffles up. Now, if you've got a bigger family you're feeding, you probably need to double this recipe. So it's about that easy. This is our waffle batter sponge. Ready to go. We love cooking a Saturday breakfast. So you can see how thick it is. I'll just get me a, a tea towel. And cover it up. And then we'll see you in the morning. And we'll be making some sourdough waffles. So our sponge looks pretty good this morning. Um, I would have probably rather it had been just a little bit more bubbly. I may use maybe a teaspoon or two of baking powder since it's not as bubbly as I want it. Now you don't have to use a baking powder in it if your sourdough starter was, you know, really bubbly and looking good. I mean, it's going to do okay, but it's just not where I wanted it. But it's still going to make some really good sourdough waffles. Now I've got my waffle iron heating up right here. And I do have a cast iron waffle uh, maker that we could use on the wood cook stove, but that is a job. <laughs> and uh, I think we've used it a couple of times, but uh, we're cooking sausage on the wood cook stove right now. So I decided I'm just going to make my waffles here in my electric, my little electric waffle maker. We don't make waffles very often. And usually when I do, I like to make enough to put in the freezer. But anyways, we've got our sponge here that we made last night for our sourdough waffles. And so we're going to just add the, the rest of the ingredients. We need, uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, kind of butter my... A waffle maker just a little bit. I'm going to turn it down just a little. But I've got a fourth of a cup of butter. 
and we need one egg. Let's see, I need about a teaspoon of vanilla. It's going to be pretty out there today, sun shining, but I think it's still supposed to be, what, in the 40s today? Yes. Wind chill 25 right now. I need about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of baking soda. This is my baking powder. I'm going to put two teaspoons of baking powder just because my sourdough just wasn't as active as I wanted it to be. And you're going to have that. There's going to be some days that you're, uh, it, it, it'll be really active, bubbly, and going, and then sometimes it's not, but it's still going to be good. And I'm going to put a teaspoon of baking soda. We're going to mix this up. Now this is going to be a thicker dough than probably what you're used to when you're making waffles. And if it's too thick, you can add a little more milk to it because your, your sponge is going to be kind of stretchy. It's going to be a stretchy, just like that. Just mix it up good. I've got me some maple syrup over here that I'm going to heat up. Now, once that I've got my batter mixed up, it's starting to really talk to me now. <laughs> it's looking better now. It just was looking pretty sad this morning. But it perked up. So you don't have to add, like I said, if, you're, if your sponge looks really good and it was just really bubbly and looking good, you don't have to add the baking powder, but I felt it necessary, so I did. I can tell by the way the sponge looked this morning, but now it's looking, now that I got it all stirred up, it's uh, looking a lot better. So we're going to make us some breakfast, and then we're going to get started with our day. We like to have a cook breakfast on Saturday mornings. That's usually the only mornings that we have to be able to get up and cook a good breakfast. And that is one of Mr. Brown's favorite meals, is breakfast. I do cook a little bit at work. Yeah. I cook my breakfast. You put that in the sink for me, please. I've got my butter, I've got my egg, I've got my vanilla, my salt, my baking soda, and baking powder. I'm going to turn this back up a little bit. I turned it down. It needs to be smoking hot, and that's what it was doing a while ago. There we go. I'm going to get me... I'm not sure about this. This is a Pioneer Woman measuring cup for liquids. But uh, it's never right with my other one cup measuring cups. It's just a little bit more, it seems like. It does seem like a big cup. But anyways, usually what I do is use one cup of your sourdough waffle uh, mix. Now this is not a very big waffle maker. But... Like I said, if it's too thick for you, put you just a little bit more milk in it. And you just want to put it right in the middle of your waffle maker. Your first one never turns out as good as the ones after, though. That's for sure. Is our sausage cooking? Trying to. <laughs> So we're going to push that down. 
when my green light comes on, that means it's supposed to be ready, but sometimes I like to cook it just a little bit longer and let it get browner. There it is, sourdough waffles. Now if you just want to make a Belgian waffle where they're just really fluffy, the recipe would be with the egg whites and making it a, a fluffier batter. We're gonna just continue making our waffles and then uh, Get the rest of our breakfast together. Mr. Brown, you want to put this on with the other waffle on the wood stove? Let's keep it warm. There's all different kinds of different waffle makers out there. I want to get me a different one. Um, I really like the square ones better. This one does a good job. I've got no... And like I said, we don't really eat that many waffles. It is a good thing to, a good meal, like if you come in at night and you just, you ain't had time to really think about supper. Waffles, pancakes, it seems like to me is always a good meal. This doesn't make a huge batch, so you may want to double this recipe if you're feeding kids or just enough for me and him and if there's one or two left I'll just uh, put it in a bag and put it in the freezer and he can eat it later stick it in the toaster and it'll be good and we all know that the sourdough is, is good for your gut Sometimes in some recipes you have to add just a little bit more uh, leavener to it to help it just poof up a little bit. When I made my English muffins, they were absolutely delicious and I froze a bunch of them and uh, they're good coming out of the freezer too. And I did use yeast with that recipe with my sourdough and so many people have commented how they made that recipe. They used their sourdough starter that they started with me and uh, they just loved them. So they were some of the best English muffins they have ever had. Some of them had never even made English muffins before and made them and said that they just loved them. So that made me happy. This waffle maker come from Walmart. It's a, I don't, it's O-S-T-R. I don't know if that's Oster or Oyster, Oster, Oster, <laughs> one or the other. But it's a good one. So that is the last of our mix, and it's going to make four big waffles. Big waffles. So like I said, if you're feeding several people, you may want to double this. Um, also, of course, double your, your starter, your whole recipe. But, and you can also double it, which is a good thing, and then put quite a few in the freezer. That way you can just take them out and put them in the toaster and eat them. So that's a good idea too.
so we got our last waffle out. It's looking really good. You don't like yours that brown. We like ours brown like that and just a little bit crunchy, but uh, you can turn your waffle maker down just a little bit. But they turned out really good. So we got our waffles over here on the cook stove, keeping warm, and I've buttered them up. And the sausage, I've had the hard job. I've been cooking sausage. <laughs> but it's ready. It's ready to go. You see my coffee back here on the background there. It's been on there about 20 minutes or so. And I've been experimenting with my coffee. Uh, I <clears throat> normally don't have a lot of time and I'll, I'll put it on the burner in the mornings and I'll boil it. And I'll let it boil for about four minutes. Four or five minutes when it, once it comes to a rolling boil. <clears throat> but I had a, uh, a gentleman comment one time about not letting their coffee come to the bowl because of it releases a little more acidic to the coffee and it doesn't really that doesn't really bother me because i love it that way I, i've drank many many cups that way but i've been experimenting with it and i i would say that if you'll let it steep almost come to a bowl and let it steep but it takes longer a lot of times in the mornings now, I try to bring it almost to a boil, then I'll turn the burner way down. This this stove right here will let it steep really good. And it seems like, to me, that the coffee has a little different flavor. It's not qu quite acidic. Uh, I used to put a little bit of sugar in my coffee, and I have been trying to wean myself from that and just drink it black. Maybe a little bit of milk once in a while, a little bit of cream but and i don't know i like it both ways but it seems like i really like it this way also just a uh, just let it steep for you know it may take 20 minutes but uh almost just where it's just barely bubbling and not a bowl not a hard rolling bowl just a good steep and it seems to have a little different flavor to me just uh uh like i say i'm drinking it black nowadays So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I enjoyed being with us this morning, seeing what we're eating for breakfast. We like making a good big breakfast on Saturday mornings. So if this gives you some ideas to make you some sourdough waffles, they're delicious. If y'all haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you're not getting our notifications, just go back and hit that notification bell. That will help. Give us a thumbs up. Even though if y'all don't see the thumbs up, we keep it private. So me and Mr. Brown and you too, they see the thumbs up and it helps us and makes us so happy. So y'all make y'all some, some waffles. And like I said, you can freeze them. Uh, you can double the recipe, whatever. So we love coming to y'all and just sharing a portion of our life. We love to share, teach, and learn with y'all. And of course, we love y'all, and God loves y'all too. So, so I'm fixing to eat some good waffles. <laughs> we're going to eat some good waffles, and we'll see y'all in a couple of days. God bless everybody.